Good morning, Grade 7, and welcome to Worksheet Cloud Grade 7 Natural Science. If you have a question during the lesson, send an email with your question to grade7 at worksheetcloud.com. So, my lesson today is on the moon and tides, and I'm Mrs. Hall, and I look forward to teaching you this lesson today. The objectives of today's lesson is to learn about tides, the tidal bulge, spring tides, neap tides, and the effect of tides on ecosystems. So, as you all know, tides are the predictable, repeated rise and fall of sea levels on Earth. If you look closely, you will notice that the height of the surf at any beach varies slowly with time. When the sea is far out and there is lots of sand exposed, it is called low tide, as you can see in the pictures to the left hand side. You can see an example of low tide and high tide right over here. So the diagram over here shows how the sea level differs at low and high tide at a beach. The vertical difference between low and high tide is called the tidal range. There are two low and two high tides per day on the sea, which can be observed on the beaches or even in estuaries. The times of high and low tides are not exactly the same every day. They occur roughly one hour later each day. Tides can be predicted and low and high tide times are published in, time, in tide tables. Fishermen use this information to plan when they will fish. Surfers also use this information so they can plan the best time to go surfing as each beach has a particular time when the sea level is just right for producing excellent surfing waves. Here we have Boulder's Beach in Cape Town at high tide and low tide. Quite a big difference. So depending on what type of beach you like, you can look at the tide table and decide when you want to visit the beach and spend some time there. Either it's just for lying on the beach and tanning on the sand or swimming here in the case of Boulder's Beach. Let's take a look at tides coming in and out. how the moon's gravity distorts the shape of the Earth's oceans into an oval shape. Do you remember how the gravitational force depends on distance? The ocean on the side of the Earth closest to the moon experiences a greater gravitational pull. So take a close look over there. To, it, I'm sorry, it experiences a greater gravitational pull towards the moon relative to the ocean on the far side of the Earth over here. This difference in gravitational pulls stretches the Earth's oceans into an oval shape. Along the Earth-Moon direction, the oceans form two tidal bulges. At places in line with the Moon where the oceans are experiencing a tidal bulge, we have high tide. At locations which are at right angles to the Moon, we have low tide. Okay, we'll go into this in a lot more detail. As well as distorting the shape of the Earth's oceans, the Moon's gravitational pull also distorts the shape of the solid Earth. The solid Earth's bulge is about 100 times smaller than the ocean bulge. But the Earth's crust closest to the Moon actually rises a few centimeters. 
Here we have the world's highest tides in the world at the Bay of Fundy in Canada. The bay is very narrow, so water rushing in from the ocean can rise and fall by up to 20 meters a day. Quite extraordinary. Why do you think there are two low tides and two high tides at a given beach per day? Let's look at that diagram, diagram again, but look closely. When the moon is directly overhead your location, you experience high tide. You also experience high tide when the moon is directly opposite your location on Earth. Remember that the Earth spins on its axis every, once every 24 hours. And so during one day, you experience two high tides at a given location. One when the moon is directly above your location and one when the moon is directly opposite your location, roughly 12 hours later. Similarly, similarly, there are two low tides per day and this cycle continues as the Earth spins. The height of the tides varies slightly with the phase of the moon. This is not because the gravitational pull of the moon is changing. The moon has the same amount of mass and therefore exerts the same gravitational pull at all phases. Rather, the change in the heights is due to the relative alignment of the sun and the moon. When the sun, moon and earth are lined up in a straight line at the time of new moon or full moon, the pull of the sun's gravity adds to the pull of the moon's gravity, creating extra high, high tides and very low, low tides. The difference in height between low and high tide is at its maximum at this time and they are called spring tides. When the sun and moon are at right angles to each other during first and third quarter, the sun's gravitational pull partially cancels out the moon's gravitational pull and produces less extreme tides. The difference in height between the low and high tide is at its minimum at this time, and these are called neap tides. Overall the, moon's, overall, the moon contribution to the Earth's tides is bigger than the sun's contribution because it is much closer to Earth. If there were no moon, the Earth's tides would be about a third of their current height. So, spring tides, let's go through this again, occur when the sun and the moon are aligned. So, when there's a full moon and a new moon causing higher high tides. This occurs twice in a month. When the moon is in a position that is at right angles to the sun, the gravitational pull of the two bodies are working in opposite directions on the Earth's surface. So here we have a spring tide showing the size of the tides at new moon and at full moon. Okay. Now a neap tide is a tide in which the difference between high and low tide is the least. Neap tides occur twice a month when the sun and moon, over here you can see, are at right angles to the earth. When this is the case, the total gravitational pull on the earth's water is weakened because it comes from two different directions. Okay, so the tide, the neap tide, is the tide with the smallest difference between high and low tide. Okay, so we have our neap tide and we have our spring tide. Neap tide here showing the size of the tides at first quarter and at one third quarter moon. Very different to the spring tides. Did you know, grade sevens, that the moon's orbit is gradually increasing? I did tell you this in my last lesson on the moon. And the moon is slowly moving away from the earth. Due to this, the tides used to be much higher than they are today. And they will continue to become smaller. 
You can now see how important our closest neighbor, the moon, is. The moon's gravitational pull is responsible for the ocean's tides. Let's take a look at the, at the intertidal zone. The intertidal zone can be seen here between the sea, there, and the top of the sand here. So that would be considered the intertidal zone. The region of the beach between high tide and low tide is called the intertidal zone. The intertidal zone is a harsh environment for marine animals to live. During storms, the surf can be very rough and plants and animals must be able to withstand the battering from the big waves and not get washed away. Animals and plants that live here are underwater at high tide, but are exposed to the air during low tide. Some organisms may stay underwater if they are in a small rock pool, which do not empty out when the tide goes out. Those that are exposed to air at low tide face hot temperatures in summer and colder temperatures in winter, so they must be able to adapt to different temperatures. And here we have some of the organisms you can find in the intertidal zone. The animals exposed to the air at low tide may be soaked in fresh water when it rains and yet be soaked in salty seawater at high tide. Therefore, they must also be able to adapt to different salt concentrations as the tides come in and out. And different animals have adapted to this tough environment in very many different ways. Here we can see crabs that burrow into the sand to hide during low tide. And over here we have kelp and seaweed which are covered with thick slime to prevent them from drying out. We have mussels and barnacles that close their shells tightly to avoid drying out. Here we have an oyster catcher that takes advantage of a low tide to feed off the intertidal zone over here. We have green anemones in a rock pool. And just out of interest, let's just move me out the way, sea anemones look like plants with flowers, but they are actually animals. Their tentacles contain a poison which paralyzes their food. The little small um, fish in the shrimps when touched. Quite interesting how nature works. Here we have a mother uh, seal and her pup in the waves in the intertidal zone and there you can see the little seal down there, the little pup. Here we have mud skippers. Um, these are fish that can walk on land. Quite interesting to sit and watch these. They, they're quite um, versatile little creatures. Now, high up in the intertidal zone, water splashes only during high tide, and the rest of the time it is dry. As you go lower down the intertidal zone, down the beach towards the sea, it gets progressively wetter for longer periods of time. Marine life in the intertidal zone have to adapt to the rise and the fall of the sea levels at the beach. But marine life is not the only kind of life that has to take note of the tides. Many people also use the low tide to collect seaweed. Seaweed has many uses, including being a food source for people. In some cultures, seaweed is used for med med medicinal purposes and to make various woven products, such as rope baskets and mats. And here you can see people collecting the seaweed for food or to make products with them on the rocks. And I'm sure there are a lot of you that enjoy fishing. Fish are easier to catch at times when they are feeding. So the tides determine when most fish feed. When the tide is coming in or going out, the moving water stimulates the feeding of the fish. And the fastest part of the tide is normally around two hours before and after low and high tides. These times are the best times to go fishing. Let's do a little re revision and recap of everything we've covered in this topic. So the moon orbits the earth once every 27.3 days. The moon also spins on its own axis once every 27.3 days. And due to both these time periods being the same, we only ever see one side of the moon 
from Earth. Remember that? The near side and the far side. Gravity is a force that acts between all objects with mass. The size of the force acting on the objects is proportional to their masses and inversely proportional to their distance from each other. If you can't remember this, go back to my previous lesson and watch it again. The Earth's gravity is responsible for holding the moon in orbit around the Earth. The moon's gravitational pull is mainly responsible for the tides on Earth, which is what we've been learning about today. Neat tides occur when the sun and moon are at 90 degrees to each other, and spring tides occur when the sun and moon are in line with each other. Okay. The rise and fall of the tides affects marine life along shorelines. They have adapted to this harsh environment in many ways to prevent themselves from drying out and from being washed away by strong waves. So, grade sevens, bit of a shorter lesson today. Um, we did cover a lot in our previous lesson on the um, relevance of the moon and earth and the relationship between them. But thank you for watching today's, lessons, grade, uh, today's lesson, grade sevens. I hope you did learn something new. And the next time you're at the beach, you're actually going to spend time in the intertidal zone. Wonderful place to spend many happy hours. And also you're going to take note of the high tides and the low tides. And be able to tell your parents exactly why they're happening. Take care, grade sevens, and have a great afternoon. Thanks for watching.